directly from their website. In fact, one silver lining of the pandemic is that it has shown how quickly we can make radical changes to our lifestyles. Almost instantly, the crisis forced businesses and individuals to abandon practices long claimed to be essential, from frequent air travel to working in an office. Now we have economic conditions comparable to that of the Great Depression due to the fallout from the coronavirus lockdowns. And now, lo and behold, we have the justification for the Great Reset and the 50-year-old plan for the new economic system. Now, just three days ago, the World Economic Forum hosted a virtual summit for the Great Reset, attendees included Klaus Schwab, the founder of the World Economic Forum, the United Nations Secretary General Guterres, Prince Charles, the head of the International Monetary Fund, and a top representative from MasterCard, among many others. And the general consensus was that we cannot afford to miss this window of opportunity to implement the Great Reset because COVID has shown our current system to be broken. The COVID-19 crisis has shown us that our old systems are not fit anymore for the 21st century. It has laid bare the fundamental lack of social cohesion, fairness, inclusion, and equality. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system for the need for the post-corona era. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. As you rightly say, it is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate, and rebalance our world. But these are unprecedented times. Every person on the planet has been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Our world came to a standstill and it became clear that we did not have the uh, answer or the mechanisms to address such an unprecedented global threat. The threats posed by this um, dreadful pandemic came upon us suddenly with very little warning. The threat of climate change has been more gradual, but uh, it's devastating reality for many people and their livelihoods around the world and its ever greater potential to disrupt surpasses even that of COVID-19. We have a golden opportunity to seize something good from this crisis. Its unprecedented shockwaves may well make people more receptive to big visions of change and global crises like pandemics and climate change know no borders and highlight just how interdependent we are as one people sharing one planet history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset. Uh, from, from the uh, perspective of the IMF, uh, what we see is uh, inevitably a very massive injection of fiscal stimulus to help countries deal with this crisis and shift gear for growth to return. But it is paramount that this growth leads to a greener, smarter, and more fairer world in the future. I am particularly keen to take advantage of the low oil prices today to eliminate harmful subsidies and to bring in place carbon price as an incentive for the uh, investments uh, for the future. Uh, secondly, we know the digital economy is the big winner of this crisis. We have a choice to remain passive, which would lead to, an, to the amplification of many of the trends we see today. Polarization, nationalism, racism, and ultimately increased social unrest and conflicts. But we have another choice. We can build a new social contract, particularly integrating the next generation. We can change our behavior to be in harmony with nature again. And we can make sure that the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution are best utilized to provide us with better lives. In short, we need a great reset. Abuja, any any down, 
into coronavirus. No, ah, yeah, if you have any figures, you know, 13,000 plus, and 10,000, and what all money, and just here, and just here, a whole lot of issues, you know, on my matter. Now they are talking about the solution. Solution is a per video near here, and they are not just say. And the only solution is to reset the world. And as of a new world, a new world order. If you are going to reset the world, there are new world order than one of It is the name of the much as someone who said, Coronavirus, I mean, we say, your old system, you did two years ago. A book of now. You need to be agent. We have to reset the world. So we are saying, she should be careful for That's a new world order. No? Yeah. And a banner, yeah. right? Ava, to us, one year, and you know, new world order, and a banner, and I had the quaco here in line with agenda 21 last week. The event, yes, mm -hmm. by 2030, mm -hmm. UN, one, she say, baby, I press your cooney, okay, and you know, reset, you know, a honor, a quaco, and you know, we are talking about global governance system, mm -hmm. senior last week. David Ike, my ATS, yes, national sovereignty, a idea, and not a idea, I ever played the movie. And then we are thinking global, and we never. Now we are the ABA, the kind of Ghana, and we think tank groups. Oh, we never so much about the church, we cry, chain, class, swap, we do our money, ever, and buy it. No, no, the Yapa was shaped, the idea who be the end. That's why the amount, yes. And the bass, I know, Musa, Momotan, and Smooch, who is a normal sense removed. Who is at your candidate over the bar? Oh, we have been all through. Say any day. Yes, I would be the idea behind 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 the it is a reset, no so bad here. Or no so so, eh, can say it is about control. Yes. The new man be brave because what can be be said? Fourth industrial revolution, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, yes. any robots. And only a new man be brave. If the new man be brave, we be asia. Robots ne ba ba be take you over. Oh. If the bedroom be brave, now we nipa. And so now to feel we need you mind. If you say COVID 19, you know, about their excuse, I did burn it down the present economic system. They are setting up a new one, a bad tie into UN at the 2020. Now, January 2021, almost by a twin summit. That's next year. Next year. To hear another person. I want to go fine tune the great reset. Okay. World leaders, and as a government leaders, any business leaders, or no back of Davos. Okay. And now for 400 cities, one by a multi stakeholder network. I know they are young people, and they are doing my being here because we are building a new order integrating the next generation. In the next video, no, I know natural say. Three components and the what the great reset is okay. Yeah, that's video no uh, yeah, the three components of the great reset agenda. No see yes, yeah, Piro Sukura's report and but before that my father said you didn't come. Was it the lady I plan to marry has left me because she hates me listening to you people, but I still hold my feet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we'll be the attack more. Say me more more. I'm reading my Christians. You see, read for the Christian. They are doing a great job, right? Me more more than Madalu. They are here. In fact, every day I send here. Me more more than Biada. Lord, see, you are really opening our eyes. Your best friend said, "Mo amo friend number the Mundaing." And your movement has come at right time. Keep it up. I'm Bra Salem, watching you live from Togo. Wonderful. Okay. We so also offer Poku Dangwa blast the bomb of the true. Koso Kamukre Ma Abibi Mine from Oheneba Denchira Akwaboso. I know we every a buyer. 
We also say, I have been watching your program, Wake Up Africa. Where can I buy the Odinga Mama medicine? I'm from NK, Western North region. And also, I want to join the movement. Right. Odinga Mama. Yeah, my friend. I'm going to be my friend. I'm going to be my good day, Hebrew teachers. I'm Eric Tachi, watching you live from Mali. How can I join the movement from here? Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm afraid Israel. 0244 6865578. Good afternoon, oh, I'm Samson. You do all. Add me. Okay, yate. Yeah, for we talk to another video, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandpa and Uncle Israel shall surely be celebrated as true legends because they represent an instrumental role and a clinical hallmark of black liberation. Very sad a bird has been termed a butterfly hmm. <laughs> hmm. sooner or later we shall get hold onto our where with us as the true hair of the people of the book that is the bible this program stands out as an eye-opener and the most imperative program so far I think i think it would be appropriate include this into our educational curriculum may the creator keep you safe as you journey on through this course in making sure the black man is liberated mentally from man man kesim ah papa you actually i'm a many age watch me right young cop now you're going next video my bar of a better to ask you have to have to have to have to have to Next video there, the third component of the Great Reset Agenda, Spiro Sukuras, Nyanko Nyankohe, and Famra, of any reports. The website, the Great Reset Agenda, would have three main components. The first would steer markets towards fairer outcomes, aka wealth redistribution through taxation and regulation. The second component of the Great Reset Agenda would ensure that investments advance shared goals, such as equality and sustainability, aka there will be global standards regulated by task forces to control every aspect of your life through regulation and ensure, and ensure compliance to the 2030 agenda. The third and final priority of the Great Reset Agenda is to harness the innovations of the Fourth Industrial Revolution to support the public good, especially by addressing health and social challenges, aka this is the transhumanist agenda to merge man with machine and enforce compliance with global governance initiatives laid out by the UN's 2030 agenda. Now this might be a good time to note that 14 of the 17 sustainable development goals include vaccination. I'm not going to talk about mandatory policy um, and uh, where I stand on that point. It may well come up later, kind of, hope, kind of hoping it does in the questions, because um, uh, then I'll share with you my rather one-sided opinion on that. Um, so what could be a best return, better in turn on investment, Rob? What could we invest our resources in if we're not going to tackle hesitancy? If hesitancy is not to blame, how are we going to deal with this in the future? Well, I would argue that now is the time when we need a shift in perspective. Immunization is a best buy. 14 of 17 SDGs are addressed through immunization. And when we talk about universal health coverage, we talk about primary health care, we talk about uh, health security, without immunization, there's none of that. I want to focus on the third aspect of the Great Reset, the implementation of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which Schwab has also written a book about and is a long-standing transhumanist agenda which seeks to merge man with machine and artificial intelligence, something that Elon Musk is already working on with his Neuralink project. There you just heard Klaus Schwab, the founder and executive chairman for the World Economic Forum, say that the Fourth Industrial Revolution is going to change us, change humanity. With the ability to visualize brain activity, for example, through a simple consumer-based EEG device, it gives us access to ourselves in ways that we've never before thought possible. It unlocks the black box that is the brain and enables us to um, really, truly be able to uh, realize an identity that is aspirational. There's now a scientific foundation for the effects of mindfulness on the brain, on the genome, on biological aging. And when the human mind does know itself, then you get the potential for a new renaissance that restructures itself in terms of our relationship to life, our relationship to the planet, our relationship to work. We need a different economic model. And by that, I don't mean capitalism versus communism. 
What I'm talking about is a shift in the system along the lines of the two big changes that happened in the 20th century, Keynesianism, with a much greater focus on health and education and the role of government working with business, and then a reaction against that in late century to neoliberalism, where the focus was on free markets, freedom of the individual, and getting governments out of the way. We need a shift to a new system that will allow us to meet the basic needs of every human on the planet, that will live within planetary means, that will be fairer, and that will be focused as its key goal, not on growth per se, but on maximizing human well-being. And history tells us that a value shift is triggered by creation of a new story about how we want to live. Now, they were talking about this new economic model not being based on hard work or being a business owner or creating wealth and success. They were talking about a new global economic order that will be fairer, they say, and essentially redistribute wealth, your wealth, as they see fit to lower the standards where you are in your countries or in some countries and raise them in others. So the goal is no longer, I want to be less bad, less monotonous, less unsafe, less unjust. It's really about a diverse, safe, healthy, and just world with clean air, clean water, clean soil, clean energy. Together we are fighting to preserve our fragile climate from irreversible damage and devastation of unthinkable proportions. Are you beginning to see how this COVID crisis has accelerated the 2030 agenda and global governance? and how they use public figures such as celebrities to help sell it to the public because people do not trust governments and institutions. Now, of course, the fourth industrial revolution will be sold to humanity as a way to better mankind, a word which they don't want you to use. Mankind, the UN doesn't like that. They want humankind, right? Anyways, they will make paralyzed people walk again. They will help the blind to see. And while this is all amazing and great, history shows us that time and time again, things that could be used to benefit humanity are often weaponized and turned against humanity. Humans have always been using tools, but because of the recent advances in technology, we're beginning to have machines that can augment us in all sorts of interesting ways. I was the first person in the world to be able to voluntarily move my legs while stepping in a robot by exciting the nervous system using electrical stimulators directly onto the spine. We believe that a cure will be possible if enough of the right people have the will to fast track a cure for paralysis. The prediction of 5 million jobs lost by 2020 to technology is serious, but it's not the main question. Construction, manufacturing, services, public health and education, these industries will still exist. The main question is, what will be the future of work? How will we define work? How will we share the wealth? One of the things that I think is so essential to free and open societies is freedom of thought. Um, and up until now, the conversation we've been having is around freedom of speech. Once we can access people's thoughts and access people's emotions, um, we have to create a space that enables people to think freely, to think divergent thoughts, to think creative thoughts. And in a society where people fear having those thoughts, uh, the likelihood of being able to enjoy progress is significantly diminished. Did you just hear that? She said right now the discussion has been around free speech, but basically once we get that out of the way, <laughs> once we get access to people's thoughts and once we get access to people's emotions, we need to create a framework for people to think in so people aren't scared and so people are safe. This is absolutely terrifying. Talk about thought police. Uh, they are fully intending and telling us right now that they plan to have direct access to your thoughts and to your emotions and be able to manipulate them as they see fit, of course, for the greater good. This is not about saving the planet. This is not about equality. This is about control. Many of the jobs will be taken by robots, so they will redefine work and what it means to work. They want to redefine what it means to be human and determine for you your role and your future of being essentially a transhumanist uh, cyborg uh, integrated into this new control grid. Now, right now we are witnessing the controlled demolition of the current system of control by design in order to usher in this new transhumanist agenda, this new system of global governance, this new digitalized system of control where we will be unable to distinguish organic life from artificial. We won't even have access to our own thoughts or we'll have access to them, but we won't even be able to control our own thoughts and emotions because they're going to do that for us because we're going to be tied into their grid system. Now, the current system was never meant to last forever. It was meant to last only long 
strong enough to enslave humanity through debt and until technology caught up to the technocrats envisioned future and now it's here now, do you think that the central banks would take responsibility for the collapse of the current system do you think that the governments would take responsibility no the virus is here to take the fall. The virus will be the excuse to burn down this old system as we're seeing happen right now and out of the ashes this new 